we go. Hey everybody, thank you for being here. I'm gonna see if I can turn this little light on. Does that turn on somehow? Let's see. No, I don't think it does. Okay, so as you can see, well, you probably wouldn't know that, but I am actually not in my house today. I am, I took a couple days off to, well, not off, but a couple days to go do some business planning and strategy. So I'm actually up in Boulder. I was hoping you guys could see the mountains behind me, but there's too much light coming in through the, through the, the big windows. So, well, hello to everybody. Hope you're having a wonderful morning or evening, depending where you're at. Today, we're going to talk about how how we can actually, we, we kind of dug in yesterday on how do we come up with these limiting beliefs? How do we have these limiting beliefs about ourselves in the first place? You know, sort of what impact they have on us. And then today, we're going to talk about kind of who told us this, these things about ourselves. And we're going to give ourselves some pretty serious permission to take them off we can rewrite them completely okay i just had a really great session a couple of days ago with someone who you know her family had convinced her for a long time that she had to give everything for her family you know and finally she had realized that they weren't actually there for her when after everything she had done to be there for them which is a really rough realization a lot of us have gone through that if you had a dysfunctional or or, or narcissistic type family unit you may have gone through that by now or you may still have yet to go through it and it can be a really hard wake-up call but the freedom part of that wake-up call is now she can redefine who she who she is right who she really is not who her family defined herself as and while that can be a little bit of an identity crisis, and we'll talk about that in a second, it's, it's also a very liberating process. So, okay, so let's get into it and jump in. I don't have, let me, one second, let me grab my phone because I want to try to keep up with live stream comments. Sorry about that, guys. I'm not my most organized self today. I, uh, I stayed up until almost midnight working on business stuff, ideas for content. Oh, you can see these pretty flowers that they left in this Airbnb I rented. And so I stayed up really late. So I am I'm a little like my brain's in flux, but it's a really good thing, you know, for anybody who's a creative person to give yourself some time and space to actually create is an amazing thing. So without further ado, let's talk about this next thing in station three. Let's see here. Share screen. There we go. Okay, so yesterday, as I say, we talked about a lot of different aspects of station three. Today, we're going to get into an exercise that I would very much like you to do. If station three is in your top numbers or really is your top number, then definitely I really want to make sure that you you use this one that you do this one okay so who told you that you weren't good enough so that's something that i think for a lot of times we don't we don't actually stop and think about it who is actually telling us that we're not good enough as we talked about yesterday we come into this world and we don't believe there's anything wrong with us at all we're just happy little babies coming into the world you know with all the fingers and toes and whatever else we got going on and that ends up being an amazing thing but what happens is we start to get told along the way that we don't have that we aren't as good as we think we are so one of the things i want you to take a look at as you're a kid right and i can remember this as i was a child so my mom had a thing where she dressed myself and my younger sister who's three years younger than me in the same clothes until i think i was in about sixth grade now we kind of liked it uh, my sister and i are very close we always have been very close but so i think we kind of liked it but the, the point is that a lot of times we when we're kids we don't have any say in a lot of different things and especially if you were raised by very like more authoritarian parents or or parents are like you know kids are to be seen and not heard that kind of a thing you have absolutely no input you know now as a mom now i try to give my daughter input in choices so i have a couple of choices that i'm good with and she gets to make that choice so she has some power in the situation however you know you could do anything you wanted to do but if you're adults in your family wanted you to dress a certain way, wanted to look a certain way, wanted to whatever, you had to kind of accept it. You were kind of in that boat, right? The problem is that as we get older, we forget that we don't actually have to dress ourselves 
just like they can't tell you what you wear today. Although I have had a client whose family was still trying to tell her what she was should and should not wear at 40 years old. But although most of us really do not have a situation with where the adults in our life, the older adults in our life can tell us how to dress or how to be when we're adults, we end up accidentally and very unconsciously allowing them to dress us in their beliefs. And what I mean by that is we don't ever, when we make that transition, we never stop to think, okay, they told me I was this. They told me I could do that. They told me I could be this. They told me that, you know, I had these qualities and we're, we never stop along the way to go, but is that how I feel? Is that what I actually want? Is that how I want to express myself in the world? We just end up and we keep getting up in the morning and kind of putting these beliefs back on ourselves. And the problem is it can seem like it's easier to not sit down and take a look at these things. However, (laughs) if we are not living a life that feels authentic to ourselves, then it's not easier. It's constantly harder. Life experiences that come into your life, again, because your particle detector is set for somebody else's beliefs, come in and they don't feel like they match you, right? So there's this constant tug of being very uncomfortable all the time because it's not matching who you truly are, what you truly want. So what we want to do today is take these, pay attention to how we're dressing ourselves and other people's beliefs. We're going to actually take them off, okay? Just take them off. Decide what we actually want, what we don't want. So you are the authority figure, as we've talked about before, you are the authority. You are the only authority figure over your life. Literally nobody else is an authority figure over your beliefs, your life, anything else but you, okay? That's it, okay? And now you get to stand up and say no. Anybody in your life who was an authority figure, who could dress you in their beliefs, who could do those things, they they can't anymore. They can certainly try and it can bug them when you shift, but they can't, okay? So in short, as I talk about here, you actually have permission to take off all the I'm not good enough clothes and replace them with beliefs that suit you exactly. So one of the things that we inhabit as we grow up is, and if, you, if you're in a family dynamic that's like this, then it's even worse. And I have sat at a table and watched this dynamic play out one time. And I was, I was actually so sick to my stomach that I actually got a chest cold the next day because it was just like hit me in the heart. So if you have a family dynamic where people, you know, as you try to improve yourself, right? So you're here, here in the Manifestor Dream Life Academy, hopefully you're taking some steps to, to continue to improve yourself, understand where all this is coming from and make shifts. And when you do that, things inherently change. They change in your relationships, they change in you, they change in how you approach the world. And that can, as we talked about in like station one and station two, that can be very threatening to people who are comfortable in the roles they had you in. And if your role is shifting, that's super uncomfortable. And inherently, it probably will shift. So the problem is that you will encounter situations where if you have families like this, they will bring up past mistakes. They will bring up things in your life that were difficult or painful for you. So that as you're sort of lifting and like the thing I watched, this this young woman who I was actually mentoring, she ended up having this really big accomplishment, really big, huge accomplishment. And she had invited me to dinner with her family. And and she had actually also invited some of her instructors and some other really key people that had helped her with this particular thing. And I knew very well that her mom and dad were had a very narcissistic dynamic uh, with her and that she was sort of put in the place of the like scapegoat kid. And however, she was like there and it was this big celebration for her and her stepdad who i didn't did not care for (laughs) for a lot of reasons ended up bringing up this really embarrassing moment in this young woman's life in front of everybody right in front of everybody and i could see this young woman that i was mentoring i could see her actually she laughed because she didn't know any different. Like, clearly this was just the dynamic that had played out all the time. Like, let's make, make fun of this young woman. Let's, let's make sure we put her back in her place. Let's make sure we remind her that she's smaller than she thinks she is, right? And I was horrified. It, it honestly said more about the dad and the mom than it did ever about this young woman. 
But this is the kind of stuff, guys, that you can come up against when you are shifting your beliefs. You may have people who remind you, maybe you've done things in your past you're not proud of. Okay, everybody has, like we all have. There's nobody, nobody gets through life without having some embarrassing moments or, or making bad decisions or, you know, we all have it, we all do it, right? There's no reason for people to bring those up when you've dealt with it and move forward, right? But that will happen a good deal. And what they're trying to do is go, no, 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 no. You don't get this crown, put back on that old tattered robe of beliefs we gave you. And we don't want that anymore, okay? I, I just want you to be super aware that this may happen. Okay, so I want you to understand that you right now, right now as you are, not anything else changing, you get to decide that you are good enough in every possible way. We talked about yesterday, loving yourself in the present moment, even if you want to make changes. That can be such a struggle. I struggle with myself, but it is something that once you profoundly allow that to happen in your heart and your soul, things really do shift. Now, you may immediately notice, and I want you to pay attention to how this might come up for you that you immediately start making excuses why that can't be true. I'm not good and I'm not really good enough as I am, or I'm not really, you know, exactly who I'm supposed to be right now, or I'm, I'm not really deserving of whatever. It's because and you may start trying to convince yourself that you aren't good enough in some way, you know, right? Like, oh, I've made mistakes or oh, I'm not really that talented. I will tell you the people that have told me that they're not that talented are the most talented people I've ever met. The people who are making it as celebrities are people who may or may not be that talented and just believe they are. I swear to you, the belief of stuff like this is, I mean, I'm sure we can all think of celebrities and singers who are very, very famous and they aren't exactly as talented. I mean, I, I see like, I don't really watch America's Got Talent or, or whatever, American Idol, but I do like the fact that the show presents the fact that oftentimes these amazingly talented people who didn't realize they were amazingly talented finally get a showcase, right? So just know if you're the one saying, oh, I'm not that talented, you're probably crazy talented. <laughs> just telling, like from years of doing this, probably true. Um, or like, I'm just a mess up. You know, that's one that, and I want you to pay attention. Like a lot of times the things we say to ourselves are the things that authority figures said to us as we grow up. So pay attention to that one. I, I get the like, you know, what is wrong with me? Like one tends to kick through mine. Oh, I'm just a screw up that will come through. You know, I, I don't finish things, which is not true, but I, I, I get those. So, or I had one client I was working with who just honestly believed she was not smart and she was super smart. Maybe not super smart in school ways, super smart in whole other areas. So whatever it is, I want you to take a moment and think about what are those things, right? And again, I want to remind you of the fact that we are made of all the same particles as everybody else. You're made of particles that already have been everything, right? So you inherently can't be not good enough. You can't be not talented. You can't be whatever it is that you're believing about yourself that somebody told you, okay? we don't take these beliefs on out of nowhere we really don't and this is one of the most critical 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 practices which is why i'm taking some time explaining it especially if you're station three to unwind this okay okay so this is a exercise i'd really love you to do really love to, you to do i've done this in retreats that i that i hold and it's super powerful every time we do it okay what you want to do is you get an old t-shirt you can grab any old t-shirt you want to it can be a white t-shirt it can be just old some old ratty t-shirt you have grab a sharpie of some sort okay and i want you to sit down and write down everything that other people have told you about yourself what their expectations of you are the criticisms you might have heard about who you are what you want to do in your life what you are doing in your life write all of that down okay and this is on page 275 in the book you're going to write all of it down what do they think you should be who do they think you should be who do they think you are whether or not you are all of those things what you think about yourself all of that okay then i want you to sorry i just i think somebody just sent me a thing in chat hang on one second oh yeah candace yeah 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 all of she just candace just said <laughs> i'm gonna have my kids do this too cannot tell you I, such a good practice. And now that you say that, I 
think my daughter is good, but I should probably double check on that one. But yes, get a t-shirt, write it all down. What do people think of you? What have they told you about yourself? What have they, you know, expected of you that maybe you don't want to? What, what things have you said to yourself, like about being a, you know, mistake or things you've messed up and blah, 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 blah. All these things we tell ourselves, okay? It's so exhausting. Even, even saying all this, oh, you can feel the weight of it, right? You can feel how heavy this is. And like, this is what you're wearing. This is what you're carrying around with you right now, okay? Without even knowing it. So write it all down. Now, once you've done that, then you're gonna feel a little silly doing this, but I promise you when I do this in a retreat, it just brings the point home. Put the t-shirt on. Put that t-shirt on that you just wrote everything down, okay? Imagine and walk around a little bit, maybe in your house with it, like walk around. This is what you've been carrying around with you. Like, this is it. This, it's, it's not true. It's not necessarily what you want, but that's what you're carrying around with you. You've been wearing it all this time, unknowingly wearing it, okay? All you have to do now is when you are ready, take a deep breath. You take that t-shirt off and you say to yourself, I now understand I do not need to carry these beliefs about myself. I do not need to carry your expectations about of me anymore. I am taking you off and I'm figuring out who I am, what I believe about myself, what I want to create in my life. Taking it off. And there's, I have this here, you can, you can say, but you can say any, whatever version of that, that you don't have to say that exactly. Whatever version of that you need to say, if you need to scream it, scream it. Like if you need to just scream something from your soul about taking this off, if you've just been so held back by this stuff, scream it, yell it, punch something, not a child, not a person, I mean, <laughs> or a child or anyone or a dog, but a, a pillow, punch a pillow, right? Punch something, pull that off and take a moment to just feel that relief that you've just taken all those beliefs off. Now, are they fixed? No, they're not totally fixed yet. That's why we do this process. We have to retune. We identify these things and we retune them so that you're now making new choices. But that's a huge step to basically turning the volume way, 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 way down on them. And then I recommend personally, you can cut, you can throw that shirt in the trash. You can cut it up into pieces and shred it. You can go outside if you have a safe place to do so and you can burn it and just watch it all wafting away from you, okay? You can just simply say, you are, as you watch this happen, as you rip it up, as you throw it away, you are not me, you are not my dreams for myself, you do not define me, and I am done with this. I'm done with it. I'm putting it away, okay? Then I want you to notice how you feel doing this exercise. Hopefully you feel unburdened, hopefully you feel lighter, hopefully you feel more like yourself. There's just no way, guys, to be able to develop true self-love, true self-esteem, to create the life you truly want and truly desire and truly deserve if you are constantly carrying and, and, and literally writing these all over yourself. I have a dear friend of mine who, she was married to a tattoo artist. And, and so she got tons of tattoos, I mean, tons all over the place that he did. And after they divorced, one of the hardest things for her was that she felt like she was literally wearing him all over her body. And like now her body was now this canvas that was his and not and not hers. And I I thought about it and I think that's so similar to what we carry with our with the negative beliefs. We are literally tattooed with the beliefs of other people that we don't really want. We don't want to carry, we don't want them for ourselves. They aren't who we are. And at the time I said to her, you know, that that may be written on your skin, but it's not written in your soul. And your soul is who you truly are. Your soul is your expression of yourself. This is your canvas now. You get to decide, right? And it's the same for all of us. What's in your soul is unbelievable. What's in your soul is beautiful. What's in your soul is the expression that you want to make in the world, right? The ways you wanna impact people, the things you wanna do, the ways you wanna manifest things. Those are in your soul, no matter what anyone else has written on you. Now we're taking them off, okay? So again, this can be an emotional process. I should have mentioned that. I can't, you can kind of imagine. Sometimes we can get angry because we can't believe we've been carrying these beliefs for so long. Sometimes we just feel sad that we were given such like problematic beliefs that are not good for ourselves. 
So just pay attention to how you feel and it's okay. Express whatever feeling you need to express in a positive way. It's totally fine. Do not hold it in. That just makes you sick. Don't let it go, okay? Now, these are great questions after you get done with this as well as this retuning statement here, okay? Now, here's where you wanna move into. After you're done with that exercise, identify yourself. Like, who are you? You know, if you were gonna get like, a, you know, you, I just actually I just went to something for my daughter's school and you have to get your little name badge and, and you, you know, you have to say hi, uh, you know, it says hi, I'm and then you write your name down right and I want you to think about you now you get to kind of take your own name badges out and plast them all over yourself. Hi, I'm what? Hi, I'm powerful. Hi, I'm smart. Hi, I'm talented. Okay. Hi, I'm abundant. Hi, I easily manifest money. Okay, these are the kinds of things I want you to think about as if you have, you know, a, a bunch of name badges and you're now claiming these things so that if you were to walk around in the world, you're like, hey, that's me. I'm this. Okay, so a lot of times, again, we will have these identity labels that we hold on ourselves that are not, we don't have to hold them. Like they change, right? Our present moment, we're creating this present moment right now. The past is gone. The future doesn't exist. We get to create in this moment right here. So each time you create in this moment right here with an identity label that you define for yourself, that is what is in alignment with you want in the world, then the next future moment starts to line up with that and the future moment and the future moment and the future moment until suddenly it's just who you are suddenly it's just the experiences you bring into your life suddenly it's just how things are you know we all know people that are like man he's just lucky he has all these lucky things everything works out for him all the time you know why because he believes he deserves everything to work out for him all the time and he believes it's going to happen okay he's got a hi I'm lucky. <laughs> Hi, I'm fortunate. Hi, things are easy for me. Name tag, right? And if you're a person who struggles a lot, this is one of the name tags I had to give for myself. I come hard from a hustle culture. Work, 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 work. The only way to succeed is working yourself to the bone, okay? And I'm going to be honest, I've done it. I've done it in the past six months. <laughs> this is a hard one for me to shift to, but I have recently decided that, you know what? I'm shifting to the high things are easy for me. Okay. I can show up and deliver this content. I I'm, I'm a over-prepared person, way over-prepared person. And it doesn't have to be, it can be in that moment. It can be right in that moment. Okay. So think about that. Like what would your life be like if your identity label is everything works out for me? Everything always works out for me. That's my husband's identity label, by the way. And everything does always work out for him and for us in general. I'm not saying we don't go through hard times. We everybody does, but things work out okay so i want you to pay attention so go down here this set of exercises right here on page 279 is so helpful in claiming the identity statements you want for yourself okay so i want you to think about it literally like you are now whatever these identity labels are that is the life that's created for you right because that what you know yourself to be is the particle detector that creates all this it's that it aligns with all this right so you can go down and go through like what are all your i am statements go through your list of identity labels right now okay think about them then as you review those and this is a really 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 good exercise i can't even tell you take inventory of what it means to have that identity label and what kind of life you can live what kind of experiences you can have if you accept that label okay so something like things are easy for me means that you can't have experiences of struggle because things are easy for you, right? A label like I'm successful means that even in moments that seem like failures, there's success happening, that success is the eventuality. That's what's gonna come. You can't have experiences of complete failure. I am financially successful. Well, you can't have experiences of being broke, can you? <laughs> if that's what you believe about yourself, okay? On the other side, if you have these beliefs, some of your beliefs are not good identity labels, like I am broke, I don't have two pennies to write, rub together, you know, I'm too old, you know, I'm too whatever, then think about what those experiences are. Think about what that identity label defines, okay? And so this is very, a very, 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 very important one, okay? So you go back through this set of experiences, so 279, 280, 
are really, really important ones. And then circle, you want to go through thinking about all this. What experiences can you have? What experiences do you, can you not have? Defining yourself in the way that you've just put these I am labels down. Now, circle the identifiers you want. Circle the identity labels that you're like, yep, that's what I'm taking on from now on. This is just the way it is, okay? Things just always work out for me. I'm a person who things just work out for me, right? Is one. Now, what do you desire for your life? Okay, so when you look at what you're desiring for your life, when you look at the things, the dreams you have, the manifestations you want, what identity labels, what I am statements do you need to have to match those goals? So make sure that you have these, these things in alignment. So like I say here, if you want to be a successful artist, you got to have things like I am talented. I create art that is desirable. I am confident in my abilities. I create art that sells for a high price. People value my art, whatever. Okay. Now, if any of these labels are inconsistent with the life that you dream of, the life that you desire, you want to cross those out. You're no longer accepting those identity labels. You're taking them off. You're burning them. You're letting them go. And then what you want to do, and this is so important, you guys, especially for those of you with station three, it's really important for anybody, quite honestly, but really important for this, my station threes out there, create a list of identity labels you've chosen as who you are from this moment forward. This is just who you are. Okay. Make that list, create several copies of the list. You want to put it somewhere. You're going to read it at the end of the day, right before you go to bed. You're going to read it when you wake up in the morning. You're going to put it on your mirror and you're going to look at them. And as you're brushing your teeth, you're reading in your head, I am successful. I am talented. I am financially secure. I am kind. I am a good person. I am loved, um, unconditionally loved. Okay. Whatever those are, put them there so that you are constantly in contact with these I am labels. We, what we are doing, just like my friend who had the tattoos, we are tattooing this on your soul. <laughs> we are writing this, tattooing it into your mind, your body, your spirit, so that this is, when you turn your particle detector, your life detector on in the morning when you wake up, that's what you're finding. You're finding experiences that align with this. Okay. So, um, and this is, yeah, this is actually a fun little, I forgot about this little exercise, play a little matching game with your chosen identity labels. Okay. Ask yourself what, what a person with each identity label might drive, what kind of spouse they would have, where they would work, where they would live, what clothes they would wear, how do they dress? And I will say you guys, one of the most powerful ways that you can kind of help reinforce this for yourself is by doing that little game, by actually thinking about like, how would they dress? You know, people oftentimes will see me out and about and, you know, dropping off my daughter at school and picking up my daughter from school or whatever that is. And they'll be like, what are you dressed up for? You know, what are you, what are you off to do today? Oh, do you have some, this or that? I'm like, I do, but I dress this way because I'm dressing in alignment with who I believe I, you know, who I want to project the person I am. Okay. So a really fun thing to do is to go through and come up with kind of like look through on Pinterest, like what kind of style would a person like this wear? And look at those styles, of course, based on your body type and your colors and blah, 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 and start making sure you have pieces and you dress like that. Because as we talked about before with the t-shirt, now you get to pick the pieces that are in alignment with who you are. We've taken off the old ones, now you get to have those, okay? That's actually a really, really fun, powerful thing. You can go walk around a mall, and literally walk around and be like, well, a, a person like like this, this identity label, what would they have? What would they do? You know, what would they be eating right now? One that I worked on with somebody who had some issues with just around food is instead of thinking I'm trying to lose weight or I'm trying to make better food choices, it was like, what if you decide to make all your choices as if you're already the fit, toned, healthy person that you believe to be, you want you believe yourself to be, want yourself to be. What if you made those choices in those I am statements now? It makes it so much easier because you're like, well, a person like me would sit down and have maybe, you know, a, a fruit bowl, some yogurt, and maybe some chicken or something, right? So when you're looking at a menu, it's like, well, a person that's already in that place would be like, I'm going to have this. Doesn't mean you can't have treats. That person would still have treats too. Okay. So 
pay attention to this. And then again, you can, if you want to look at your original list and check out how many of your original I am statements were identity labels given to you by other people and how many were negative or limiting, how many, and, and again, this can be kind of hard, you guys, it can be emotional. So if you need support, please post in the group. Sometimes it's really, really hard when we actually confront how much we've been carrying and how much we've been allowing other people to define our lives. And so we've gotten ourselves to this place in our life that's kind of sucky and doesn't work and doesn't feel good. And we realize that like it wasn't even us that got us here. It was like all this stuff we are carrying with us that got us here. And there can just be a very it can be a healing crisis. It can be very hard. It can be emotional. So if you need support, post in the group. That's what I'm here for. So just know that you get to like rip off any labels that no longer suit you. You're crossing them out. You're letting them go. So now we've done a lot with station three. Okay, let's see. Gosh, station three is so big. Okay, so I'm gonna probably leave you here with station three. I may go ahead and just record a few things for the rest of station three and put them up just so we can keep moving forward. So for people that are in station four and things need to you know, move forward on some of the emotional stuff. But I'm super happy that you guys were here. I hope this was hugely helpful. I would love it, love it. If you do the t-shirt exercise or you do any of these exercises or you, you know, write up your I am statements or you even go get, you know, name badges and you write out all your stuff and you stick it on a poster. That's actually a cool one to do because you can have that poster up and you can look at it and go, no, this is what I am. So these are the experiences I have, right? In fact, that's actually one that I might do now that I'm saying that. If you do that, I would love it if you would post it in the group and like, you know, hashtag station three or hashtag I am statements, whatever you want to do, something like that so we can all see it and encourage you and support you in this process. Okay. So thank you guys so much for being here. Tomorrow, we're going to go ahead and head into station four. We're going to be looking at what a, what's our emotional life say about us and what what kind of emotions and so forth can be blocked that can cause a lot of issues in general for all of us in terms of you know just how we relate to life triggers that we have around emotional stuff i just had somebody who has <clears throat> excuse me a lot of anger triggers and she came at me about something and i was like okay i can clearly see this is a trigger then this emotional response is very different it's not it's not in relation to the seriousness of this right now so you know, when we recognize that it can make it also very much easier for us. All right. Thank you guys for being here again. If you can, I would love it if you can write up a little something. My assistant Alan has put sent it out to you and also has put in there like, hey, could you just give us a little bit of a survey on how you're experiencing this so far and how this is working, and what you think of everything that I'm doing. I would be so grateful. Thanks so much, everybody. Have a beautiful day and I'll talk to you really soon. Bye.